So let's say, for example, you have a person who likes to run. You know, they're just, they like to run races and they do it, you know, they like to run miles. And they're an average runner and they typically place in like sixth or tenth place and they run. And they enjoy running and they're just happy doing that. And one day they go to a race and um, they're in the locker room and they're talking to their friend there and their, 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 their sole falls off their shoe. Mm. And like, oh my God. And then and their friend goes, hey, you can wear my shoes. Okay. Okay. He puts on the shoes and just notices that his shoes were blue and his friend's shoes were red. Puts on his friend's red shoes, goes out there, wins first place. Friend is so happy that he wins first place. You can keep those shoes. Mm. Starts wearing those shoes every race. And for like the next three months, wins every single race, goes to a final, is competing in a regional and they're going there and all of a sudden gets to the airport his bag gets lost. Then he goes to, to town to go buy some new shoes and that town only sells blue shoes. So buys blue shoes, goes to the race. How do you think that person's going to feel going to the starting line in the blue shoes? Yeah, rough. Right? But when it's really has nothing to do with this, it, it's just a color of a shoe. Yeah. That's what mindset is. And when we, we don't realize that we're wearing blue shoes yeah. in a lot of different areas because mm -hmm. when you're, you, you, you can't see outside your mindset. Yeah. Because it's everything. The only person who can see outside it is someone else. You know, there's a great... Have you seen the movie... Uh, oh, shoot. I'm going to butcher the name. What's it called? It was a Disney Pixar movie. Ah, it was called um, Onward. Yes. Uh, have you seen yes. Onward? You remember that. that scene in... Yeah, remember that scene in Onward where there's that, that chasm and they have to, he has to go over the to chasm. Believe. Yep, you got to... In order for the, the invisible bridge to work from one side to the other, <laughs> yeah. you have to believe the bridge is there. Yeah. And so he goes out, but he's like, ah, I'm not quite willing to believe. So he ties a rope to his waist and his brother sits there and holds the other end of the rope and he walks out on the bridge and he's like, oh, I'm walking on this invisible bridge. And he walks across, he gets almost you know, halfway there and then the rope un you know, unwinds and falls. Yeah. So, but his eyes are closed, he's not noticing and he's just walking. He's like, oh, this is easy, great, because yeah. he has that that background and then at the very end he looks down and sees the rope is no longer attached and that's when he falls this falls right mm -hmm. and uh, you know you know he dies and it's the end of the movie i'm just kidding no. <laughs> <laughs> but he you know falls catches himself and they move on but i yeah. love that picture of mindset of like a same similar to the yeah. shoes yeah. right like uh, he thought he was yeah. safe because of the rope in reality it was that it was his mindset that was getting in there yeah and when we and and what we don't realize is that we're we're usually trying to outgrow our old mindset and our, and your mindset is created based on your life experience and your mindset is basically beliefs about your past successes and failures. Mm. But what we don't realize and what I figured out how to do is how to dial into future mindsets to solve current problems. And that's kind of where the whole concept of frame shifting came from. And that's when, when I started coaching that way over the past few years, the clients I work with just started to explode. Can you give a quick 30 second on what does that mean to your future, you know, your, that future version of you? Well, there's, well, um, I'll, I'll tell you an example of how, how I discovered it. That'll probably be the easiest example. So when the Bigger Pockets podcast, we did that in August, because prior to that, it was just me. Yeah. Jason Dries coaching was Jason Dries. I was coaching 65 clients by myself, which is not hard to do. I can do it. It was good. Um, and then we was on the podcast. And then all of a sudden, the next month, we had 192 people book in an intro session. <laughs> 192, right? And I was typically doing like five a month. So it, I basically went from just me. I got four of my friends who were coaches and could sell and literally set that up. And then literally two months later, we launched Mindset Academy, which was me doing four hours a week for six weeks. And it was to the point where every day I was in complete and total overwhelm, but the business was accelerating so much. I was like, this is amazing. Don't screw it up. Every day I'm like, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. And I was sitting here going, oh my God, I'm in complete and total overwhelm. And I had this I, uh, understanding that, you know, it was like November but if I go back to like August, August, I had everything dialed in. And then I had this other thought. Well, if you took Jason from 10 years ago and pulled him to August, he would have been completely overwhelmed. Mm. And that made me realize that there's a version of me in the future who could come to the present moment, who could look at this and go, I got it. And that's actually when I did my first frame shift, when I just focused on that version of me and all of a sudden the stress went away. Yeah. And I felt focus a new direction because we literally are operating in a multiverse of frequencies. And, and we have the ability to shift. And, and the simplest way to describe that is, you know, you're driving in the car, you remember, hear a song from 20 years ago, you did something bad, you remember that, ugh, and you feel bad, and you do a negative shift, yeah. right? So we can do forward shifts, we just don't know how to do it. 
So the more we are open to dialing into future versions, future frequencies, the faster we can elevate ourselves. That's cool. Yeah, there, there's a thing that we do inside the Better Life Tribe that I call, um, and I talk about it a lot on this podcast, but it's called identity-based goal setting. Mm-hmm. And the idea is you start with your goal. You don't start with, I want this, or I'm gonna, my actions, I'm going to do this, which is fine. And I think I probably even picked this up largely from working with you, uh, where it's not just your actions, which are important, and the habits are important, and the goals are important, but we start with identity of like, who are you in the future? Uh, Benjamin Hardy, Dr. Benjamin Hardy has a book called Be Your Future Self, uh, which is a similar concept as this yeah. idea of like, who are you going to be? But like, let's get into that mindset now. So we start with like, I am a loving, present uh, father to my kids. Mm-hmm. That's training them. That's raising them. Uh, and I have like this this thing mm-hmm. that I say to myself often, mm-hmm. like this this is me mm-hmm. uh, as a father. Because now I'm operating from that frame, that mindset. I'm mm-hmm. not sure the difference of how you define the mm-hmm. difference, but I'm operating from yeah. that standpoint of yeah. I am already that person. And now I can make goals and actions and habits from that yeah. perspective and yeah. not from the, I am struggling as a father and I am overwhelmed and I am you know barely around. Yeah. Well, yeah, like the struggle, that's reaction, right? Mm-hmm. That's in reaction. So um, it's basically the same concept. But the biggest challenge we have right now is getting out of reaction and processing our reaction so we can shift. Yeah. So it's, so it's less about reaction, action, and it's more about reaction, realign, than action. Mm. 